Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 10 for November the 4th, 2018. We begin a new unit today, Unit 3, entitled God Blesses and Recreates Regardless. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Sibling Rivalry. Our devotional reading comes out of the Gospel according to Matthew, Chapter 16, uh, verses 13 through 20. Our background scripture is taken from Genesis chapter 25 uh, verses 19 through 34. And our print passage today uh, where our lesson takes place is also taken from Genesis chapter 25 uh, verses 19 through 34. <clears throat> our key verse reads, The Lord said to her, Two nations are in thy womb and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels and the one people shall be stronger than the other people and the elder shall serve the younger that is taken from Genesis uh, chapter 25 verse um, 23 from the King James Version our lesson aims today number one is to contrast the impulsiveness of Esau with the cunning and forethought of Jacob. Second, long for human relationships in which selfish motives and ambitions are held in check. And then thirdly, to resolve to forgive family members who have taken advantage of us. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. <clears throat> the first one is entitled, The Potency uh, of Prayer second outline is entitled a prophetic delivery and then the third outline is entitled sibling rivalry we certainly thank and praise God for yet another opportunity to share uh, God's Word with you <clears throat> we hope that you will grab a Bible and um, some pen and paper so you can take some notes we're going to give you uh, quite a few scriptures that uh, accompany this lesson and and we hope that you are following um, this survey that we have undertaken from the book of Genesis uh, and it certainly have been helpful for us to learn uh, and see these narratives play out uh, and, and, and the fact that God is in control uh, at all times so I want to read a little bit of the biblical context for this lesson that is taken uh, from our uh, lesson quarterly this lesson begins uh, unit 3 uh, entitled God blesses and recreates regardless despite the human frailties among Abraham's descendants God's power overcame them and ensured the fulfillment of his spiritual and physical promises that they would um, uh, to be a blessing to all humankind Genesis chapter 25 presents the final days of Abraham uh, detailing the giving of gifts to his sons by his wife Keturah and the giving of all he had to Isaac. The transference of the inheritance was now complete from Abraham to Isaac the legitimate son of promise. At the age of 175, Abraham died and was buried by his sons Isaac and Ishmael in the cave where he had buried Sarah. Uh, you can see that in Genesis chapter 25, verses 1 through 18. But we want to <clears throat> make uh, mention of the fact that uh, the covenant that God made with Abraham is still in play. Uh, it's still in effect, uh, even though... Uh, he subsequently dies it doesn't mean that the promise that God made to him uh, uh, also died uh, that promise uh, continues to live on uh, but we left off last week in the 24th chapter of the book of Genesis where we see Abraham uh, seeking to arrange and secure a wife for his son uh, uh, Isaac and uh, so he understands, Abraham understands the, the promises in detail and so uh, he continues to uh, be a blessing uh, to his sons even uh, in the face of death. 
So we want to begin with this first outline, uh, the potency of prayer. This is taken from Genesis uh, chapter 25, verses 19 through 23. And I think I want to read this from the uh, King James Version. The Bible says, And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah uh, to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian, of Padanaram, uh, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. Verse 21, And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was uh, entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. Uh, and the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Thus conclude the reading of the word of God from the uh, first outline. <clears throat> but I want to make mention, uh, because when you study the book of Genesis, you see the word generations or genealogy um, appear uh, in, the, in the reading. And I want to make mention uh, uh, the purpose of generations or the genealogy. Um, it, 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 it's, it's a family history um, and it is a study of families and tracing of their lineage and history. But when we look at why God uh, 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 points this out to us in Scripture, it's important to note that in God's ways with men, the moral character of a nation uh, cannot be understood unless its source is known. Uh, and so that is the purpose. Uh, uh, and as we look at this word nation or two nations as God uh, uh, responds to the prayer of, of uh, Rebecca uh, as to why uh, she's having this, this, this struggle, this pain, this pushing uh, within her, uh, the Lord tells her in verse 23, that two nations uh, are in thy womb. So uh, I'm going to give you some scriptures a little bit later on uh, so we could uh, take a look at what these nations look like as history unfolds uh, uh, in the Old Testament. The character of these individuals, these uh, two children, these twins, uh, are played out uh, in history and so we want to be able to understand that uh, uh, Isaac, mar his marriage and subsequent parenthood uh, mirrored that of his parents, uh, Abraham and Sarah. So uh, verses 19 and 20 provide us with the context of what was about to take place um, uh, in the remaining verses. Uh, so like Sarah, Rebecca was unable uh, to conceive a child in and in her case, uh, for a period of 20 years into their marriage, uh, Isaac had honored God's standard, uh, standards for marriage and obviously wanted to build a godly family with Rebecca. Uh, however, um, they remained childless. And, and it should be understood that, that barrenness uh, 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 in this case uh, was frowned upon. It was... Uh, looked upon as uh, sort of a subservient position, uh, uh, sort of a disgraceful position that uh, a woman could not have a child. And so what we do see uh, about these two parents uh, uh, is that they were both praying about the situation. And that's very important uh, that, uh, <clears throat> that we seek God out but yet, Rebecca is having some issues, some uh, uh, childbearing issues, some uh, pregnancy issues, some pregnancy problems. And, and she inquires as to what this pain and this pushing is. And so uh, the Lord tells her uh, that this is a struggle 
uh, concerning two nations uh, within her. Uh, and so God goes on to tell her what the future will be like for these children. You know, it's very important that, that we understand that God knows the end before the beginning. And, 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 and it behooves us to uh, uh, seek out God to, uh, uh, that he might enlighten us as to what the future <clears throat> will uh, uh, unfold for us. Uh, particularly surrounding our prayer requests and so uh, God tells her uh, uh, in verse 23 uh, two nations are in thy womb and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels and the one people shall uh, be stronger than the other people and the elder shall serve the younger so what does this mean so uh, Jacob uh, owed his supremacy uh, to sovereign election, not natural rights. So he didn't do anything to uh, secure his position. And we'll talk about that a little bit later as we go along. But God was involved. Uh, so this prophecy uh, that God gives found a fulfillment as uh, Esau's descendants the Edomites were uh, often subjugated by Israel uh, and at least uh, at last were included in the Jewish state uh, and so I want you to look at 1st Samuel chapter 14 uh, verse 47 also 2nd uh, Samuel chapter 8 uh, verses 13 and 14 2nd uh, Kings chapter 14 uh, verse 7 so we as I said earlier we can see these nations uh, uh, and these people uh, descendants if you will we can see it play out in history uh, with Israel so God's choice of Jacob the younger over Esau uh, the older um, is a paradigmatic example of divine sovereign election uh, God made this decision uh, God chose uh, Jacob <clears throat> uh, the younger brother I want you to also look at Romans chapter 9 uh, verses 9 through 13 and then verses 18 through 23 so uh, God deals justly with all but he has mercy on some uh, and I also want you to look at Matthew chapter 20 verses 1 through 16 so we can see here uh, 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 verse 22 suggests that Rebecca's pregnancy uh, was not an easy one this the jostling in her womb troubled her uh, and so she prayed about it and so we see God's response and so uh, God warns her that there will be conflict um, God told her that she was going to be blessed with twins each of whom uh, would be the progenitor of a great nation of people uh, but there would be conflict between these two nations, one being stronger than the other. And so God also revealed to her his will that the younger was already chosen to inherit the promises uh, uh, made to Abraham. And this is beautiful to understand uh, when God is dealing with us. He uh, uh, is sovereign in his decision. He is sovereign uh, in, in his process of of who he wants to do a particular thing and there's absolutely nothing that we can do about that and sometimes we feel that certain individuals are not uh, worthy of, of, of what they have or what they may do or, or, or what positions they uh, 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 may ultimately uh, come to hold. Uh, God is in control of this situation and as I was reading and studying this lesson the Spirit of the Lord just reminded me to remind you the listeners that he is able he is able uh, 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 even though God reveals to Rebecca that there is going to be conflict he still allows these children these uh, brothers these boys to be born into the world he is still able to to 
work around and work in the situation even if there's conflict in this family and as we see going forward this conflict uh, uh, in, in, in this uh, rivalry was also played out between the parents uh, uh, of these children uh, Isaac favored uh, Esau uh, 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 the older whereas Rebecca favored uh, uh, Jacob the younger and so we see this conflict uh, play out between uh, uh, the parents and the children uh, uh, but but yet God is able but the question is asked in the quarterly what are some obstacles to consistent persistent prayer in the lives of believers and in the community of faith uh, we do have faith issues uh, that present challenges uh, for us uh, sometimes. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, we don't take the necessary time and opportunity to pray when we should. And, and then sometimes we, we withdraw from prayer and we uh, move away or back up from God because we might uh, uh, fear the answer being no. Uh, God will may, may not sanction the request and so we have all sorts of things that uh, uh, that 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 prevent us from uh, uh, praying about our situation but we can see here that uh, uh, Isaac uh, is praying about the situation and also Rebecca and so we all uh, have to as uh, the book of Hebrews uh, uh, admonishes us to come boldly before the throne of grace seeking mercies and grace to help in the time of need we should have no misgivings about prayer and even if the situation is unfavorable uh, we should still be talking about our circumstances to God and so when we read earlier uh, in the lesson aims uh, talking about selfish motives and ambitions I also want you to look at Philippians chapter 2 and then we talked about forgiving uh, family members who have taken it advantage of us. You know, that is a topic in and of itself. Uh, but we want to keep in mind here that God knows uh, what these children represent. He knows the path that they are going to ultimately take. Uh, but he has made a selection uh, that Jacob would be the one that this, uh, this promise uh, comes through uh, but I want to make mention before we move on uh, that uh, there is so much power available uh, to us in prayer and so as we get a little bit further we're going to see here what Esau was forfeiting uh, uh, in this lesson so we want to begin with the second outline entitled a prophetic delivery this is taken from Genesis chapter 25 uh, verses 24 through 26 and I want to read this from the NIV translation when the time came for her to give birth there were twin boys in her womb the first to come out was red and his whole body was like a hairy garment so he named him so they named him Esau Verse 26, and after this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob. Uh, Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth uh, uh, to them. And so we can see here the manifestation uh, uh, of this prophecy of this uh, birth that God had uh, pronounced upon this these uh, two individuals uh, God confirmed his promise to Rebecca concerning her pregnancy twin boys were uh, born to her as foretold her sons were dramatically different in their appearance the firstborn was reddish um, and an unusual quantity of hair covered his entire body the second came out with his hand projected and taking hold of the heel of the firstborn. These unusual circumstances and the oracle uh, the parents had received from the Lord earned them their names. 
Uh, the first of the twins was named Esau, which was indicative of his future, excessively sensual nature and wildness. Uh, verse 25. His brother came out holding onto his heel and was named Jacob, meaning heel. Figuratively, the name means to deceive or heel grabber. Uh, both brothers' names accurately depicted their attitudes and behaviors later in their lives. So in the uh, conflict, even before birth, these twin brothers remain so through uh, much of their lives. Uh, it persisted to their descendants and the two nations they became, uh, Edom and Israel. So we gave you scriptures to help you understand that uh, uh, God knew the future of these individuals, um, but yet God is in control. Uh, this unusual birth proved that God always keeps his promises and that his will is sovereign over all his creation. Prayer is uh, necessary on the human side, but ultimately God's will always prevails. Accepting this truth requires developing an intimate relationship with him and, uh, and exercising unwavering faith in his power. We don't talk a lot about God's will. Uh, we don't hear a lot about it and, and, and sometimes we don't understand the sovereign uh, will of God and, and we don't understand the permissive will of God. Uh, but each one uh, presents us with uh, some principles whereby we can get a better understanding of how God works and how God moves even though he allows something and, and it may be negative does not mean God is, is somehow lost control uh, of a particular situation but he always uh, is aware of what is going on in our lives even when things are an unfavorable so this conflict uh, this this dysfunction in this family uh, is is already in play, but God has made a decision as to the outcome of His selection and how He would move this promise uh, uh, further into the historical account of of Israel as well as uh, to Edom. But we have to remember, as I said earlier, that the covenant. And this is important for all of us to understand as believers. We have to keep in mind what the Lord has originally told us he would do. We have to be good stewards over the word that God has spoken unto us. And we must remain faithful and secure and at peace and at rest because God has already determined a matter. He has already disclosed his will to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And once that matter is confirmed, we should understand that God is faithful and just. Uh, he will keep his promises uh, no matter what that situation looks like, no matter how negative it becomes, no matter how much dysfunction uh, is in that family, God is still able to save. Uh, and so we have to continue to pray uh, for our families and for our family members, even though they are not functioning uh, in a capacity that is that is fruitful and that is conducive uh, to the way that we think things should be, even for uh, us as parents and the instructions that we give to our children that they uh, uh, disobey us, we have to continue to keep praying for them because we serve a God, as I said earlier who is able. Uh, but the question is asked here, how have you experienced God's reversing humankind's expectation in accomplishing his will? We have seen this time and time again when we thought that we were counted out, when we thought that it wouldn't work out, when we thought that we were uh, sick and we couldn't get well, and when we didn't have and wouldn't have and how God stepped in and reversed those situations how you couldn't make it out of that a uh, dilemma that you were in all of us that are saved as as a as a as a general rule we have been brought out of the uh, uh the, the 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 power and the uh, of sin and the devil we have been brought out of darkness and into this marvelous light how do you think God did that it was by his power 
that he secured you, that he saved you, even uh, as scripture would have us to understand, while we were yet in sin, Jesus died for the ungodly. So God knows how to rescue us uh, in the nick of time, and he reverses uh, these situations that look so promising to fail. God says, no, this will not be the end. No, this will not lead to death. No, this will uh, uh, not lead to, to unfavorable uh, conclusions. God just keeps on doing great things in our lives. But as we move toward this sibling rivalry in Genesis chapter 25, verses 27 through 34, and I want to read this from the uh, NIV translation Verse 27, the boys grew up, and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. Uh, Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, uh, but Rebekah loved Jacob. So we can see how these parents uh, have created favoritism uh, among their children. Uh, and, and as we want to look at this situation in a practical way, this is something that we should not do. And we'll share more as we go along. Verse 29, uh, once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country famished. Uh, he said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. That is why uh, he was also called Edom. Verse 31, Jacob replied, First sell me your birthright. Look, I am about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? Verse 33, But Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Verse 34, Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. There are some things that we want to be able to appreciate uh, from this lesson that will help us understand uh, what this birthright uh, uh, is all about. Uh, first of all, the firstborn had the right to be the principal heir of the family's fortunes. Um, that we can see that in Genesis uh, uh, 27 verse 33. I also want you to look at Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 17, uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 5 uh, verse 1 and 2. In the covenant family, this fortune included the substance of the Abrahamic blessing of offspring uh, and the land. We can go back to Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, verse 3, and, and verse 7, uh, and, and we can see that play out. But let's talk a little bit about what Jacob, uh, I'm sorry, what Esau uh, is giving up. Uh, he uh, sold his birthright, which involved, number one, the paternal blessing and the place as head of the family. Second, the honor of being in the promised line out of which the Messiah should come. Uh, and so we have Shem, Abraham, uh, and Isaac. Uh, and, si and then uh, the thirdly, the exercise uh, of the family priesthood. Uh, so Esau carnally despised all these blessings as the uh, lover of pleasure more than a lover of God. Uh, but you can see how uh, Jacob uh, is playing out uh, uh, in real time here uh, about his character, uh, that he was a heel grabber, that he was a trickster, uh, that he was a deceiver. Uh, and we have these things happen in our families where we have uh, 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 issues and dysfunction where we deceive our family members. Uh, we, de we despise uh, who our different family members may be and we seek out uh, uh, ways to undermine them. And, and this is very important for us to understand and we see so much killing in the land today 
among family members. Why is this? Why are we killing our own uh, uh, flesh and blood? And so we can see here, even uh, 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 as we look back in Genesis, uh, that Cain killed Abel. And so we had the first murder uh, uh, in the biblical account. And so this is where these things lead to. Uh, and so Esau didn't understand, uh, didn't know uh, what he was giving up. Uh, he didn't understand uh, the the birthright. Uh, he didn't understand the the uh, 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 the benefits that he had uh, being the firstborn. But the birth of children is an exciting experience, even somewhat intimidating. Parents wonder what their children will become when they mature into adulthood. Often what they become can be related to what uh, they see and hear from their parents. Uh, the sons born to Isaac and Rebekah matured and became exact opposites. Esau became a skilled hunter and adopted a lifestyle of freedom from real responsibility and did what he wanted. Uh, Jacob on the other hand became the quiet settled son who demonstrated a level-headed quality uh, that made him dependable. Isaac and Rebekah's love uh, for their individual sons was based on the flesh rather than the spiritual. And that's something that, that, that we have to understand about our children. No matter what they are, no matter how disobedient they may be uh, 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 and unresponsive to the commands of parents. Uh, we were all created in the image and the likeness of God. And we have to do the things that, that encourage uh, and that lift them and that edify them and that move them forward. And so uh, if we don't teach them anything, if we don't help them to understand uh, the importance of life and, and the importance of being on God's earth, how will they know that? How will they understand their birthright, if, if, if I can use that term? How will they understand that God created them uh, for a purpose? He didn't create them just to die uh, 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 aimlessly without hope without promise in the world and so as we see this uh, there is a lesson for parents in observing the behavior of these brothers toward each other and their respect for spiritual things uh, parental favoritism is spiritually and physically detrimental and always leads to sibling rivalry parents must seriously consider the kinds of habits and attitudes they foster in their children by their own behavior. Isaac and Rebecca were equally at fault for how their sons initially lived their lives. And this is something that we don't hear a lot today, uh, even uh, from uh, a parent's standpoint. Uh, we are responsible for what we teach our children. We are responsible. We are accountable to God, we are uh, accountable to the law uh, for how we raise our children. Uh, we ought to hold them near and dear, and we ought to hold them precious because they are in the sight of God. And we have to be about the business. I believe Proverbs chapter 16 will give us some uh, general principle about raising children, a uh, train up the child in the way that he uh, should go. We have to teach them. Uh, God commanded this even as as uh, uh, the Israelites uh, came onto the scene. God commanded them through me, through Moses to teach their children uh, how He had brought them out, how He had fed them, and how He had given them water to drink. And we have to teach our children that it is God who is providing for us. If we don't lay the foundation as parents for our children, they will not know. They will not understand. They will not realize their purpose. And we are losing far too many of them, even in 2018, uh, 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 because they do not understand life. They do not understand the value of life and the uh, uh, the preciousness of life that they are willing to lose the life that God gave them. God could have prevented them from coming into the world uh, but he allowed them to come into the world not just to die in the streets but to become purposeful 
And it is the job of the parents. Uh, hear me good. It is the job of the parents to teach the spiritual, the godly, and the practical uh, principles to these children. Uh, uh, and, and if we don't teach them anything, they won't know. And so we have to, uh, when we are critical of them and what they do and how they are acting, I present to you a mirror today. I present the word of God to you today that you might challenge yourself and even ask yourself, did I do my job? Did I do what I was commanded to do by God? Did I teach my children what thus says the Lord? Did I pray with my children? And did I pray for my children? Did I carry them and take them to church? Or did I send them? This is a very challenging lesson today. This is a powerful, provoking message for us to take a look at what we are doing as parents in the face of what we see in our children. We can see uh, 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 with our own eyes the, the challenges that they face. We know what they are up against in society. We know that we are losing far too many of them. We know we are having uh, uh, far too many early funerals. We, we know we are attending the cemeteries far too often with our young people. And we have to do a better job of reaching them. So uh, Isaac and Rebecca, and I'm thankful that the Lord is laboring with me now to labor with you now in an effort to save. If it's nothing but one life, it is worth it for me to reach out as a minister and as a parent and as a grandparent to each and every one that is listening to this message to do your job as a parent. Do and hold yourself in, 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 in a responsible light where your children have the very best that God has given you to give to them. It is not all practical, uh, uh, but it is spiritual as well. We have to teach our children the principles, the spiritual principles that will uh, 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 provoke them and provide for them a, a life of fruit, a life of peace, a life of longevity, a life of godly principles that they can pass on uh, uh, to their children. And, and I'll just say this as I close. I wanted to purposely mention the genealogy as I said early on uh, why it was necessary, why it is pointed out here from God's perspective. Uh, and I will read it as I close. It is important to note that in God's ways with men, the moral character of a nation cannot be understood unless its source is known. So we hope, trust, and pray that we have given you something uh, to think about today. And, and I want to be able to uh, pray for us uh, now, uh, for parents, for grandparents, for those of you that are interacting with children. They need us to be our very best uh, to them and with them. God, we come in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you for the very privileges of life, thanking you for this lesson today, thanking you for what we are learning today. And Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus to just help us as parents, help us as people to uh, give the principles that you have given to us to these children. Help us to walk up righteously before you that they may have clear godly examples of what it means uh, uh, not just to be a parent but to, but to be a, a children of God. Help us to understand that we are responsible for what we teach our children uh, and what we don't teach them. We are responsible for them. And we, help, we hope, trust, and pray, uh, Father, that you will guide us in a way that we might guide them. Uh, that there be no division among us. We pray for families of dysfunction today. It rests in all of our families today in some shape or form. And we're asking you to give us forgiving hearts and, and forgiving minds to love one another as you have commanded us in your word. We thank you for providing this example in this historical account that we might take hold of it and that we might learn and we might do better. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask and pray. So again, until such time that the law will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.